There's an old picture from way, way back in the late 1800s called the Tree of Life. And what it did was list and categorize all the organisms on this planet and gave a hierarchy from the simplest organisms uh, to the top of the tree were the most advanced organisms. At the bottom of the tree are bacteria. At the top of this Tree of Life are humans in their picture. And they said, oh, well, this is the course of evolution. As you go from the base of the tree up to the tree, you're unfolding evolution. So the original idea was heredity was responsible for the evolution. And therefore, genes were directly connected to evolution. So that at the bottom, the primitive organisms would have very few genes. And as you go toward the top, more and more complexity would lead to more and more genes because the genes were providing the characteristics. So when you get to the level of human, that's why they anticipated there was going to be over 100,000 genes. But what did we find? Well, in this picture, I hold in my hand three organisms. One of them is a miniature worm that's hardly visible with a naked eye called Cenorhabditis elegans. This is an organism that geneticists use in research today because it's an extremely small organism with 1,271 cells. And it has lots of behaviors and characteristics. So geneticists study this very simple organism trying to get the secrets of genetics with a very small number of cells. And it turns out the Cenorhabditis elegans has about 19,000 genes. And then you go higher up the tree, and there's supposed to be more genes, and we end up with the fruit fly. Again, another major species studied by geneticists and understanding heredity. And you say, well, how many genes does this more advanced fruit fly have over the, over the worm? And you can see how much more complex a fly is than this primitive worm. And it turns out the fruit fly has only 14,000 genes. Well, this threw a monkey wrench in the belief right away. How can you go up higher up the scale and end up with less genes? But the biggest monkey wrench, as I mentioned, is when we got to the top of the tree and found that humans have 19,000 genes, essentially the same number of genes as the most primitive worm that we studied in our laboratory. And all of a sudden it says in our belief that complexity in life is due to genes is totally false. So it doesn't come from the genes. And now we have to understand where is evolution coming from? It's not coming from the genes. There's something else. And it's interesting because back in 1809, 50 years before Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of species, the first and more accurate uh, literature on the nature of evolution was published by a scientist by the name of Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck. Lamarck. Lamarck studied evolution and wrote the story of an evolution of hierarchy from primitive organisms to more complex organisms. But his theory was a little different than Darwin's theory because Lamarck's theory was not based on genes, but it was based on an interaction of organisms and the environment in which they live. He said organisms and environment have a lockstep interaction. You don't find polar bears in the tropics. You don't find orchids in the Arctic. Every organism fits in its environment, and that's what he keyed into. And it was so important because in his story of evolution, it wasn't based on genes. They didn't even know about genes then. He based it on the nervous system. He said, if you look at the evolution based on the development of the nervous system, you can get an accurate understanding of the ascension from primitive organisms up to humans with ever-increasing development of the nervous system and not related to the genes. So this is uh, a future that we have to look into and go back to the original story of Lamarck because Lamarck's story, although called uh, as a joke by modern scientists in the recent unfolding of new science in the wake of the Human Genome Project, Lamarck is coming back into the scientific reality of having the most profound insight. How an organism responds to the environment will determine the fate and characteristic of that organism. Hat dir dieses Video gefallen? Gib uns ein Zeichen und lasse einen Daumen nach oben da. Bist du interessiert an weiteren solchen kostenlosen Videos? Dann abonniere unbedingt unseren Kanal und drücke die Benachrichtigungsglocke, denn nur so stellst du sicher, dass du kein weiteres Video verpasst. Danke dir und bis zum nächsten Video.